polygons and circles. Observe these curves. Do you find anything special in these curves? We see that all the curves are closed curves. It means, in all the cases, the starting and the end points are same. Apart from this, we see that in the case of 1 and 2, the curves do not cross, while in 3 and 4, the curves cross themselves. Curves 1 and 2 are called simple closed curves. A closed curve which does not cross itself is called a simple closed curve. Some more simple closed curves are shown here. Now observe these simple closed curves. We see that curves 1, 2 and 3 are made of line segments only. While curve 4 is made of line segments and curves. We call 1, 2 and 3 as polygons. So a simple closed curve made of line segments only is called a polygon. Some more polygons are shown here. A polygon having three sides is called a triangle. The three line segments forming the triangle are called its sides. Can you draw a polygon having less than three sides? Of course not. Because a triangle is a polygon having the least number of sides. A polygon having four line segments is called a quadrilateral. The line segments forming the quadrilateral are called its sides. Rectangle is a special quadrilateral in which each pair of opposite sides are equal. The figure A, B, C, D is a rectangle because AB is equal to DC and AD is equal to BC. Square is another special quadrilateral in which all the four sides are equal. In the figure PQRS is a square. So PQ is equal to QR is equal to RS is equal to SP. Now take a sheet of paper. Do you know what is its shape? It is rectangular. Fold the sheet in such a way that the horizontal side CD falls along the vertical side DA. Now cut the paper along CE. Unfold the paper. What do you get? The resulting paper is in the shape of a square. Did you ever observe the shape of a bangle? What shape does it remind you of? It reminds us of the shape of a circle. A circle is a simple closed curve. Now let us discuss some terms related to a circle. Every point on a circle is at equal distance from a fixed point inside it. This fixed point is called the center of the circle. In this circle, A, B, C, D are any four points on the circle. O is a fixed point inside it. On measuring, we see that A, B, C and D are at equal distance from O. So, O is the center of the circle.
Note that a circle cannot have more than one center. The fixed distance between the center and any point on the circle is called its radius. So OA, OB, OC and OD are radii of the circle. Obviously, all radii are equal. A circle can have infinite numbers of radii, but they all are equal in length. A line segment which passes through the center and whose end points lie on the circle is called the diameter of the circle. Here the end points of line segment lie on the circle and it also passes through the center O. So AB is the diameter of the circle. Again, observe the diameter AB very carefully. Here OA is the radius and OB is also the radius of the circle. So OA and OB are equal. This means the length of two radii of a circle gives the length of its diameter. So we can say diameter is twice the radius and radius is half the diameter. Observe this circle. End points of the line segment AB lie on the circle. Is it a diameter of the circle? AB is not a diameter of the circle because it does not pass through the center O. We call AB a chord of the circle. A line segment whose end points lie on the circle is called a chord of the circle. Observe the line segments PQ and CD. Obviously, CD is a chord but not a diameter. PQ is a diameter. Is it also a chord? Yes, PQ is also a chord. So, diameter is also a chord. In fact, diameter is the longest chord of a circle. The length of a circle is called its circumference. Let us discuss for various methods by which we can draw circles. We can draw a circle by moving a pencil around the edge of a 1 rupee coin, a bangle, the cap of a bottle, etc. We can also draw a circle using a compass. Fix a pencil in the compass. Keep the metal tip of the compass fixed on the paper. Open the compass as needed and move the pencil arm around, keeping the metal tip fixed. The point marked by the metal tip of the compass is the center of the circle. If a circle is given without its center, we can always find its center as shown. Fold it exactly in half. Again, fold it as shown. Now, open it out. The point at which the folding lines cross or meet is the center of the circle. To find the center of a circle that cannot be folded, we proceed as shown. Tear a corner of a paper. Place it on the circle such that the corner of the paper lie at the circle. Mark the two points on the circle where the paper crosses the circle. Join these two points by a ruler. Repeat the above steps to get another line as shown. The point where the two lines meet is the center of the circle. 
We can use the compass to make beautiful designs by drawing circles. Draw a circle of any convenient radius. Without disturbing its opening, put its metal tip on the circumference of the circle and draw another circle. Put the metal tip of the compass at one of the crossing points of the circle and draw another circle. Repeat the above steps till you get a design as shown here. Now color the design to make it beautiful.